Hello and welcome to another Advanced Skeleton video. In this video, we are going to take a closer look at the wrinkle map function, which can be found under the face section. And we'll start out by having a look at the end result, what these wrinkles look like on our Conan demo character here. And as you can see, there's a few wrinkles around on his face and they are essentially coming on as the controllers are moved. If we uh, hit go to build pose, we can see that in neutral pose, uh, there are hardly any of the wrinkles, but as the controllers are moved, the wrinkles are dialed in accordingly. So to have a look at how we made this setup, let's start with a new scene and bring in Conan, the demo character. And let's go to the demo section here. And as a quick reminder, you can check online if there's been any updates to any of the demo characters and automatically download this. Uh, we'll choose the Conan character and hit open. And here is Conan and we will open the face section and about halfway down there's this subsection called wrinkle map. Now note that you might see the controllers being toggled on and off and uh, if you're wondering how I'm doing that, that's a hotkey that you can set up in here. Uh, display set hotkey and essentially assigns uh, one of your keys to uh, toggle the visibility of the motion system. All right, let's go ahead and hit the first button that says create wrinkle curves. Now, at this point, you might get some warning message depending on how the shading network on your character is created. Now, in this case, we're getting a warning that uh, the shader that is being used on the face is also used on other objects on the body. So to avoid having those wrinkle bumps appearing on those other parts of the body, it's just telling us it's going to duplicate the shader and use that duplicated shader for those other body parts. So, okay, we're fine with that. Another warning here is there is an existing bump map on the shader that's used on the face. And if we continue, it will create the layered bump map, essentially mixing both the wrinkle bump maps with the existing bump map, but the viewport will only show wrinkle bump map, but the rendering will show the mix. So we'll hit OK and we're fine with that. As we can see, we have now got these uh, guide curves and each of these curves are essentially going to become a wrinkle. We can at this point start adjusting the curves if you want to. Uh, note just to see the face more clear, I'm going to hide this rather large eyebrows on this character. Uh, and already I can see that this smile line could be a slightly better aligned, so I'm just going to go ahead and move these points a little bit to make a bit more nicely aligned smile line curve. Now, note that some of the curves are cutting slightly into the skin here, and that does not matter. That's just fine. The wrinkle will render just fine anyway. All right. Next big button here is create wrinkle map and it's essentially going to take these curves and generate the texture map that's going to be used as the bump map for the wrinkles. Uh, we'll hit that button. It does take a few seconds to compute so we'll wait for that. And there we go. It has been created. What we can do next, we can hit the button here called open folder. And that will show us where all the maps that has been generated are stored on the drive. This is the main bump map and the rest is a series of masks, which are the masks determining which areas should be faded in and out depending on what the controllers are doing. And finally, there's also a UV snapshot. Um, now, in terms of UVs, I want to mention that uh, you probably already have a set of UVs for your character. And if in, you open the UV editor with your model selected, you will see your original set. And you will also see there is now a additional set called the UV face wrinkle set. 
it looks like this and uh, that's what we have a UV snapshot of here now it's only for convenience if you do want to manually be painting the your bump maps in uh, programs such as Photoshop you can import your UV snapshot as a background layer so you have uh, more reference of where you are on the face uh, next we're gonna test out these view buttons here normal is just showing the, the normal view bump is essentially isolating the effect just to be showing the effect of the bump map so you can we can start seeing here that that is the effect of the bump map now there's another button here called the bump file if we hit that we can see the bump map texture assigned as a texture to the face which can be useful the other view button here is called mask and what that does it's showing the effect of the mask so if you move the eyebrow controllers up here we can see this is showing the mask effect um, so to show the combination of the mask effect and the bump then we can hit the bump button here and finally you hit normal that is your normal textures with the bump map as well we'll go to the view called bump so we can more clearly isolatedly see the effects of this uh, wrinkle map functions uh, note that moving the controllers works both if you're moving these uh, controllers in the control box here or if you are using the on-face controllers next we have this series of buttons in a subsection here called edit and that is for editing the various areas so the areas that the wrinkles are sub uh, divided into is the forehead and we'll hit the test button to show you where each one of the areas is we got forehead which is pretty obvious that's the wrinkles on the forehead next is frown which is by default just a one wrinkle uh, when you're frowning the eyebrow uh, next we'll hit the test button for crow's feet now that's the what they're often called these wrinkles that appear in the outer corner of the eye we got bunny lines which is the name of the wrinkles appearing in the inner corner of the eye smile line uh, it's essentially the major fall that occurs for most people when you're applying a smile or a frown or there's also a section called all that then essentially allows you to work on all the section at the same time uh, so we'll hit test for the all and you can see that it's applying the pose that uh, evokes all these sections okay so let's see how we can edit any of these wrinkles we'll start with foreheads so if we hit curves that's showing us the curves it's also the heads up display is also updated here it's showing that we're editing wrinkle map for the forehead curves at this point we can manipulate any of these curves moving the points to change the shape you can also just select in curves any of the curves and delete if you want to remove one or if you want to add one you would just simply duplicate any of this note there's a couple of parameters for each curve and that's the depth that's this wrinkle gonna have and the width that each wrinkle gonna have maybe we'll make an obvious change so that we can see the effect when we run the update so let's just delete the second wrinkle and uh, move the first wrinkle up and maybe we'll make it uh, even wider so we'll take that up to 30 and let's hit apply and when we're hitting apply here now the maps are being regenerated and it takes a couple of seconds and to test we can hit the test button and we can see that we got one less wrinkle and it's much bigger now we did get in this case a bit of a nasty scar right on the corner here now if we look at the map which we can open in the folder or you can just click on the bump file you can see that because we didn't run the new curve all the way to the middle it's ended up being cut off now we can easily fix that we uh, hit the button called edit forehead and we'll make it just run past the middle to be safe and hit apply and that will render the new map and we can now see we're getting a smooth transition between the left and right eyebrow okay next each of these sections have a button called mask so let's go to build post hit test for the forehead 
and hit the mask button. Now what this does, it selects the mask object and we have some parameters here. The first one is multiply. So it allows you to set a multiplier for this area. So if we wanted, for instance, this section, the forehead to be twice as bumpy as the rest of the face, we can just increase the multiplier to two. Or if we didn't want the forehead to be affected at all, a multiplier of zero would remove the area. We'll go back to the default multiplier of one and see that we have some other parameters here. Now offset allows you to have values even if the driver is zero. So we can go to the build pose and apply offset. That means we are kicking in the amount of wrinkle even when the driver is at zero. Now this could be useful if your character is going to have some wrinkles by default even before applying any facial expression which might work for uh, some of the an older looking character or even for Conan hair, I would probably choose to have a slight offset. So there are these indications that there will be wrinkles even before moving the controller. And as the controller is moved, they are becoming more obvious. All right, back to the parameters. Uh, next is start. By default, it starts at 0.25%. So that means as this controller starts moving up, the wrinkles are not being kicked in at all yet. Not until you hit 25%, that's when it starts kicking in. Now, you could adjust this and set it all the way to zero. That means as soon as there's any motion in the forehead, the wrinkles will start kicking in. All right, another thing I want to mention is that the main big box controller does get a couple of extra attributes when uh, you have run the wrinkle map function and that are these two attributes wrinkle map multiply and wrinkle map offsets and just like we mentioned about offset and multiply it does the same but this does it for the entire face so you can here say you want all the wrinkles to have some effect even at the default pose as you start dialing in a bit of this, you can see that we are getting all the wrinkles starting to appear, even in default pose. Now, to demonstrate the multiplier, we'll set this back to zero first, and we can hit the button so called test for all regions that applies a pose that evokes all the uh, wrinkles. Select this um, box controller here, and we can see that the multiplier here allows you to basically dial in as much as you want to crank in the wrinkles. So if you find that the wrinkles are being too obvious, too strong, you can just dial them right back down overall for all the wrinkles on this controller here. And we have a button here called settings that selects uh, the settings object. And you have a couple of settings for the maps here. Obviously we have the X and Y resolution of the texture map. By default, it's at, uh, 1024 by 1024. will work fine for most projects. You can increase this if you want. You also have the mask dimensions, and these are the masks. Now note that when you're seeing the thumbnail in Windows Explorer, you're not always showing it correctly what they look like. If you drag and drop them into Maya, it will open F check and it's more correctly showing you the mask. Now the mask definitely don't requires high resolution as it's just kind of defining the areas. So the default values for these are 512 by 512. And you can also here, to find the, the image format that you want to work with. And uh, that's it. I hope you have enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.